Lighting Makeovers A video tutorial series on how to transform your 3D imagery to the next level using the art of lighting. It's simple, 3D artists like yourself maybe send scenes with great potential to us. We light them using HDR Light Studio for you to observe and learn about the role of lighting in 3D imagery creation. The 3D artists then get the transformed scenes back. So, without further ado, let's get started. Bart van Dornick, a 3D artist based in the Netherlands. He's got a very nice portfolio of work, but the 3D hairdryer has caught our interest the most. The project was made using Modo, rendered in V-Ray, and at the moment it's lit seemingly with an off-the-shelf outdoor environment that can be seen in the reflections. With projects like this, it's very common to see clean studio-style lighting, where you've got a softbox or a graduation of light. Your eyes are experts at understanding materials in terms of how the light is reacting with them. Sometimes a hard light source will be used as a softbox reflecting in the scene. But because the reflection is being spread on this material, we can easily tell that it's satin. In this video, Mark from Lightmap will be using HDR Light Studio to light the 3D hairdryer project. So Mark, let's get this scene open and take us through this project. Hello, it's Mark from Lightmap and I'm going to light this hairdryer model in Modo and V-Ray. The first thing I'm going to do is prepare the scene before I start to try and light it. So I've started up V-Ray rendering in the frame buffer. And when I look at the frame buffer, the first thing I see is that the user has applied uh, some different settings onto this view, which are effectively post effects. Now, when lighting an object, I feel it's important to light uh, using the ground truth. If we apply effects to what we're lighting, we won't be seeing that truth as we light, and it can be quite misleading because the image won't react to the lights as you'd expect. So it's a bit like trying to light wearing sunglasses. And then when you take the sunglasses off, you realize what you thought you were doing, it isn't right at all. And uh, the sunglasses were kind of providing this filter uh, that was a bit misleading. So I'm going to turn off the exposure adjustment and this LUT adjustment, which seems to be uh, coloring the view. And then we notice this funky effect. And this is because the values are being clamped. So we'll turn this off. And then this looks more like it. So that is going to allow me to light this object, effectively looking at the truth of the lighting. OK, so let's just have a look at the scene itself. Firstly, I don't want this wire wrapping around the hairdryer uh, because it's not really uh, looking very nice. Uh, so I will get that wire and remove it. I want to really produce a pack shot style shot of this hairdryer. So we'll get rid of that wire. Deleted that. So if I look at the top view of the scene, we can see that the hairdryer is lying on its side. It will be much easier to control and shape the lighting if uh, I have this facing the front view. So if I go to the front view and pick the hairdryer and rotate it 90 degrees, it now faces the front and I actually want it facing the other way. So I'll rotate it 180 degrees. There we go. So if we go to our camera, I'll actually make this camera the render camera. And then let's reset the camera. Now I also want this shot to not have a lot of perspective on it. So I'm going to change the angle of view to 15 degrees. Just adjust the shot. Okay, and then let's have a look at this rendered in V-Ray. Okay, so I think that's a nice shot to light. 
we can see a decent amount of this grill on the back. Uh, it's a reasonably flat view without lots of perspective, which works very well for the side view. Uh, so I think we're ready to light this shot. And to do this, we're going to use HDR Light Studio. So I'll select the environment, I'll change the renderer to V-Ray in the uh, HDR Light Studio connection settings here and then let's press start and HDR Light Studio will open. We're going to light this view using HDR Light Studio's own render view because at this point in time the V-Ray renderer uh, is not supported in terms of displaying it inside of HDR Light Studio. So we will uh, switch back to Modo and V-Ray to check how the lighting's going uh, as we go along. So I don't actually need this view, so I will close this view. So I'll press play and we will import the 3D model from Modo to light. And I'm going to change the resolution of this view so it's higher quality. And then we will zoom in to see the main details of the hairdryer. Okay, so now we're ready to start lighting. So there's a default gradient here. If I go to the light properties, we can turn down the brightness of this so that we're ready then to start lighting and adding new lights. So I'll go to my preset lights and the style that I want to go for is to use graduations of light like this light. So I'm going to drag this light that's been cut in half. I'm going to drag that and drop that on the model. And I'm going to use the light paint to just drag and position and just discover what this light looks like in different positions on the model. Because lighting is about discovery and it's, a, it's about trying different things out. So okay, I like that to start there, but let's make this light bigger. So I'll click on the scale tool here and keep hold and drag and this will scale the light to be larger. And now we will drag around you can also drag on the canvas itself and it can be quite good if you you know let's say you get a position on here and all you want to do is now move it down you know the handle is the orange dot here you can just kind of tweak using the canvas or tweak using light paint in the view so here I was coming along this nozzle and I was seeing can I get a position that gets the light on the front of the nozzle but also gets light going across the whole hairdryer which I can. So now I'll drag that downwards a little bit and I think that's a good position for this first light. So going back to the light properties I'm going to press plus to increase the brightness of this light. I'm going to adjust the shader on here and change the colour to a dark red, which is a bit similar to the hairdryer that we're lighting. Okay. So I want the graduation of light to go further up the hairdryer. So I'm going to scale up the height of this light now. But then I want there to be a more of a graduation. So controlling the ramp for the content settings of this, this, this alpha ramp, I turn on the log and I'll just start playing with this curve for the light. 
Now I like I like how this is graduating, but it's getting more faint here, and this is because we can increase the width of the bulb to come further across this light, so it's not just coming from a point. Okay, so that's looking good. This edge here is a bit soft, so if I go to my alpha multiply, I can adjust this ramp, and it's this ramp which is effectively cutting that light in half. So I can make this a harder cut. Okay, so I like how that's looking. I'm going to go back to Modo and just do a test in uh, V-Ray RT. So this, this looks really nice. I'm actually happy with this. So I'll stop rendering and we'll go back to Light Studio having done that little test. So as I go along, I'm going to name these lights as well, just so I can organize my scene. So I'm going to talk, call this one Top Grad. And I'm going to duplicate this light and click towards the bottom because I want the opposite. So I will rotate this light 180 and we'll create another graduated light at the bottom of the hairdryer. So this one we don't want as bright, so I'm going to use the minus to just dial that one back a bit. So it's not competing with this top graduation. So the primary shape in this scene is this, this you know, top cylinder, let's call it, of the hairdryer, which we're describing with these two uh, major lights, the top grad and then the bottom grad light. So now we want to describe the shape of the handle using the light. And to do this, we'll just use a soft round light from the toolbar. So I'll press that and make that. And then we will click at the back of the model here to describe and place this light for the handle. And then I will duplicate that light and we will place one for the front here. And then I really want something around the back of the model here. So again, I will duplicate that light and I will put something here, which is a bit big, so I'll scale that down. So I'll call this bottom back. I'll call this front handle. And then I'll call this back handle. Okay, so let's have a look in Modo at what these look like now. If I wasn't recording a demonstration on a single screen, I would have V-Ray running on my second display at all times as I'm doing my lighting. But because I'm doing this demonstration for you using a single display, uh, then this is why I keep flicking back uh, to Modo. So here, we can see that the handle is nicely described with these two lights. I think if anything, the this light and this light could be slightly brighter. So I'll leave V-Ray RT running, I'll pop back to Light Studio, and the back handle I'll take up a stop, and the bottom back I'll take up a stop. And then if we switch back to uh, Modo, we can see those have been boosted here. Okay, so let's go back to Light Studio. So one thing that's a really nice trick when you're lighting something like a product like this is to use a ring of light behind the object. So we'll change the light paint mode to rim. So when we drop this, it will drop it behind our object. And if we solo this, we can see that it's it's kind of catching the light around the silhouette of the object, which is really good for a, a product shot and to light a product. And I'll just scale this down till it comes into view, scale it up. 
And it's really nice how it's kind of catching certain highlights and angles on, on here. Um, let's just make a few more adjustments. So kind of increase the size of that. So that looks good. So let's look at all the other lighting. And let's put a backdrop behind here by dragging and dropping just a soft light, soft kind of square light there. And we'll take down the brightness until it's kind of just off of white. Okay, so let's look back in Modo. And this is where we're up to. This is what the shot is looking like. Now at this point, I think this light can get a little bit brighter to be a little bit more dynamic. And we need something just around here to just bring this grill to life a little bit. So back to Light Studio. Let's make the top grad, increase the brightness of that. And then put a light in for this grill using reflection mode to paint its position. Give it a little boost there. Back to Modo. So this looks a little bit blown out, a bit too bright. So we'll adjust that front handle light. And that little bit there is a bit disturbing because it's it's kind of seeing the edge of the light where the width of that uh, bright area kind of goes less bright. So it's because we were trying to get it onto this funnel area, but we've actually created something a little bit funky there. So I want to fix that also. So if we go back to Light Studio, uh, this light here, which is the front handle, we're going to take down a stop. And then we're going to adjust the position of the top grad using light paint to get rid of that darker spot that was around and then light ring we'll call that one background just make sure I'm organizing as I'm going this was the back grill and that is a bit big and it was a bit too bright Okay, so if we go back to Modo, we are now looking at that render. And we've got rid of that little dark spot, which is which is really good. Right, we're going to call that a day. I'm happy with that lighting. So if we go here and we press the HDR button and we browse and let's call this lighting one and render that. And then we can close HDR Light Studio and stop the connection. Our scene is now being lit with that lighting one image on disk. So now I'm going to stop interactive rendering and render this as a high resolution. Let's do a um, 2500 by 2500 pixel render of this. And that's it. So thanks for watching this lighting makeover using Modo and V-Ray.